there is a difference between passion and obsession. When you're passionate, everybody cheers you on. Oh, you found your passion? Awesome. Follow your passion. Live with passion. When you're obsessed, they're like, why you gotta be so crazy? Why do you always gotta get things so quick? Why do you spend so much time here? When you're obsessed, people think you're nuts. If no one thinks you're crazy, you're not yet operating to the outer limits of your potential. Go after your dreams, right? Go after it. I never compromised that. I never allowed anybody to tell me what I was capable of accomplishing. I never let anybody tell me that I can't do. I'm not afraid to fail. I'm not afraid to fall over, make a mistake. That oftentimes cripples people on the onset of getting to, into anything. The best way to contend with problems, with issues, with adversity is action, is by taking action. The more you sit and the more you wait and the more time you spend with that adversity with the upper hand inside your head, the worse it's going to get. Once something's important to you, it never leaves your mind. If you always dreamt about being a singer-songwriter and you never did it, you will be haunted by that at the age of 70 because it's still right here, stored in the back of your mind. It's something that's meant for you, that's trying to call to you. You see, your dreams, you either pursue them or they can haunt you. Until your mind is open to the possibilities that I can do this, you would never be able to do it. Once the mind starts to believe it can be achieved, only then does it start to break down tactically how we can do this. If you look at the greats in anything, that, uh, in any walk of life, the greats do things when they don't always want to. And that's the separation. We all think about quitting the guitar. It's hard to process information during pain because that pain takes over and you can't think rationally. You're thinking about fight or flight, save yourself. That's not a rational thought. It's not a thought that's gonna get you through hard times. It's all about your mind takes control of you. You have to say, you, I run this motherfucker. You need to make it a habit to start every day validating yourself, cheering yes. for yourself because life is a marathon. And this might be a challenging leg where you're like, I'm just gonna throw in the towel. I'm not gonna do that thing. Hell no. If you're standing in front of that mirror, you deserve to feel the support and empowerment and encouragement that you need. You are doing so much every single day that you don't give yourself credit for. When you invest in something and you hustle and you work for something, you got a different type of attachment to it. You're going to have a cold day in hell for somebody to try to take this from you. We live by this, we die by this. We don't surrender, we don't retreat. Effort, effort is isolated. The reason why effort is isolated is because nobody can fix it. Effort is 100% in the mind. I live for today, and I don't, I don't care what happened yesterday. I live in the moment because that's the only thing we have in our lives, are moments, moments in time. And as soon as I've gone out of that door, we can never reverse back and, and play it again because it's real life, it's not a dress rehearsal. So I don't really care what happens five minutes ago. I'm just gonna keep going today and living today and enjoying myself because I know what God gives, God can take away in the flash of a second. Mm -hmm. It can all be turned upside down and I've experienced it. Sometimes in life when everything's going great for you and you don't know good from bad, you need to experience a little rain sometimes so you can enjoy the sunshine again. And now I'm happy for the, the, the small things in life. Do you realize that every day you thought you wasn't going to make it? Do you remember them days where you thought it was absolutely unbearable and you thought you wasn't going to endure that one? Do you know that your survival rate for every last one of them bad days is 100%? You survived every hater. You survived all the evictions. You survived the firings. You survived all the trouble you ever been in. Your survival rate is 100%. You've got to tell yourself, despite the circumstances, the situations, you have to tell yourself that, listen to me, I'm not going anywhere until I get to go. Like until I make my dreams become a reality, I'm not quitting. I don't care how much money I have to invest. I don't care how much time I have to invest. I'm going to continue to do this until I become successful. What I've realized over the 23 years of my life, it's not the physical body that holds us back. It's not the physical body that holds us back, but it's the mindset. The biggest disability you can have is a bad mindset. Tired don't mean nothing. Tired is only in the mind. 
tell yourself you're tired, you're gonna be tired. I don't get tired. While all my friends and people who I knew were out drinking and partying and enjoying life, what was I doing running fucking 10 miles down the road in the fucking rain or killing myself in a boxing gym? And then people say to me, you know what, you're lucky. I'm lucky because I fucking worked all the hours that God gave me. I'm lucky because I fucking trained so hard that I can't be beaten. I need you to confront you because you're the one holding you up. I need you to confront you. I need you to look in the mirror and tell you, you are not going to do me like this no more. You're not going to continue to sabotage me. You're not. You're not going to keep procrastinating. I need you. You're not. Your biggest enemy is you. People don't understand it's you against you. The only person that gets in your way is you. Nobody else. It's you. I was a soft kid. I was sensitive. I cry easy and I would be scared to fist fight. And my mother used to tell me this thing. I don't even know if you remember, but you said this to me more than once. You said, son, sometimes you have to be a lion so you can be the lamb you really are. You should be a monster. You know, because everyone says, well, you should be harmless. You know, you, you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat and all of that. It's like, no, you should be a monster, an absolute monster. And then you should learn how to control it. Those who have swords and know how to use them, but keep them sheathed, will inherit the world. The only person that can hurt me is a friend. You have to be careful of your friend more so the people that you may think is your enemy. Anybody you fight is not your enemy, and anybody that helps you is not your friend. As a child, my parents always told me, you could be whatever you want to be, you could do whatever you want to do. He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. You will have good days and you'll have bad days, but you will always learn something more or something new on bad days than good days. It's okay to be unbalanced for a while. It's okay. Don't be all this stuff. People say you got to be balanced to be the best in the world at what you do. You have to be unbalanced to find every bit of energy and strength that you have to pull it off. Then you get balanced once you become great. And it takes being obsessed to where people think you're crazy. Small minds discuss other people. Gossip. Good minds discuss events. Great minds discuss ideas. I stand before you without arms and legs, but a very strong man because of the bad days in my life. Unless you know three things. Number one, who are you and what your value is? Number two, what is your purpose here in life? And number three, what is your destiny when you're done here? If you don't know the answers of any of those three questions, you're more disabled than I.